guys, what's up? Haven't been here in a little bit. How's it going? It's Tuesday, and it's Tuesday. Tuesday, for some reason, drags. Drags. I wanted to come on and express a little bit about my health. Um, I've gotten my thyroid checked, an ultrasound done, a radio iodine scan, blood work, um, three times now, I think, and still haven't gotten any answers. Um, I don't know if that's what it is, but whatever is going on with my body, it is annoying, it is kind of depressing, frustrating, there's a mix of emotions that go on with this whole thing. I, I've done a lot of research as to foods that can hurt or help. I've looked up symptoms, all sorts of things. The biggest issue that I'm having with it is the fatigue, the um, lack of appetite, the weight gain, which boggles my mind because I literally run around this house, I run around at work, I run around outside, I'm always moving, always moving, and still can't keep the weight off, I don't get it, it's very frustrating as a female especially, I can speak for a female, we take our weight very seriously. And most women are very insecure, and the biggest insecurity that we have is our weight. So it is an issue. Not that I feel like I'm huge, but I'm bigger than what I would like to be. And I seem to be gaining more. I haven't weighed myself. I'm kind of afraid of what I'm going to see, <laughs> to be honest. But um, this whole hypo or hyperthyroidism is no joke. If you do your research, <clears throat> you find out that it is a serious, serious issue. And believe it or not, many people deal with this issue. And it's odd to me that so many people deal with it, yet we can't figure out how to control it. That, that's what's odd to me. At this point in the science, where we're at in science and medicine, I don't understand. So I've been doing some research on foods. Um, if you're hyper thyroidism you basically can't eat anything that's good <laughs> you can't have pasta you can't have the carbs the heavy carbs you can't have dairy um, I mean don't get me wrong if it's for my health reasons I will do what I have to do and I think he's in the background pooping because that's what he likes to do <laughs> he's definitely pooping right now but um, and hypo is the opposite it's more of that which is strange, um, they don't know what I am. When I first got my blood work, they said hypo, and I, I felt comfortable that that's what it was because I was looking at the symptoms, and nine out of ten of those symptoms match what I'm going through. Then I went back again for more blood work, went back for my results, and now it's hyper. So, I don't understand. It's very, very frustrating. They tell you, you know, make sure you you stay active, you stay healthy, you eat right, you exercise. I do all of that, and I'm still struggling with some sort of issue, and it's driving me insane. I'm hoping to hear back from the doctor this week to find out when I can go back, what is going on, what I can do, what they can do for me. I, this is very, very, it's a very frustrating thing, and i got to say, any, any female in particular, because I can't speak for men, but female in particular going through this, the hardest thing is trying to keep yourself feeling good about yourself when all of this is falling apart, it feels like. So, I have a hard time dealing with it as well, and it's not easy to just sit here and say, Oh, it's okay, it'll get fixed, blah, blah, blah. Well, in the meantime, as that's happening, I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. Um, I honestly think that after I had Jackson, my body, not right after, because I breastfed him up until he was a little over a year. 
and then I was kaput with it. But everything was good. I actually lost weight, a lot of weight, a little bit after having him, like probably three or four months into having him. I dropped weight. I was fitting in my jeans, no issues. They were actually kind of loose. And I felt good. And I know that when you breastfeed, they suck all the fat and everything out of you. So yeah, it's easy to lose weight. But as soon as I stopped breastfeeding, something changed. Everything changed. My metabolism changed. Everything changed. So I don't know if there is a thing called thyroidism that sometimes you get after having a baby. And it's basically your thyroid is in shock and doesn't know how to regulate your hormones. So it just does it how it feels it should. And usually that's wrong. So I don't really know what it is. Um, hopefully find out some sort of answer by the end of this week. And to try to get somewhere with this. It's, it's very mentally, mentally straining. Like you sit here and think, oh my God, I feel disgusting. I feel gross. I feel unattractive. I feel like I don't even know what I feel because what I was thinking two seconds ago, I now don't think that anymore. It's absolutely insane what it does to you. The thyroid is this tiny little, little gland that literally controls your entire body. And you can actually die or go into a coma if it's not treated and it gets worse. Absolutely insane. So it's one battle after the next. You know, I was so afraid that I was going to get huge with Jackson. It wasn't really me that got big. It was him. <laughs> and after I had him, I dropped basically down to where I was before I had him. And then I dropped down even lower to where I would like to be and then bloated right back up. So it's absolutely insane. Um, if you have any inkling of something being off, anything at all, my, my first sign was fatigue. I thought maybe because I was working nights and then being up during the day, maybe I was just tired. But that's not me. If anybody knows me personally, you know that I'm constantly running. It runs in our bloodline. My mother does the same thing. My sisters are that way. We're all like that. We just keep running. So when I couldn't do that anymore, I knew something was wrong. And with him getting older and running around more, it was getting harder to keep up with him when I was just too tired to. But I can't not let him run around because I don't feel right. So I just kept trucking, get going, get going. But I've had enough. <laughs> the thyroid or whatever it is that's wrong I've noticed my estrogen levels are not very high, I don't think. Um, I know that your breasts change after you breastfeed, but mine didn't change, they just disappeared. <laughs> so, that sucks. Um, you know, none of us want no boobs. That's why how many of us go and get them done. Oh, there he goes. Up on the bed. I gotta watch him, make sure he doesn't fall. And my metabolism is ridiculous, not to be too TMI, but if you go to the bathroom two, three, four times a day, that means your metabolism's going, it's moving, it's, it's doing good. I don't do that anymore. So it's a mess. It is a mess. <laughs> Here he comes. Here he comes. Who's that? Who is that? <laughs> You still have a pretzel in your mouth from like 45 minutes ago. But, yeah. You want to get down? <gasps> you want to get down? There you go. He's going to try to grab my phone probably. <laughs> yep. We call him Little Hands because everything he's not supposed to touch, he touches. But anyway. Yeah. This whole thyroidism, if that's what's wrong, I have no idea. My levels have been off, too low, too high, between two blood works. And I haven't gotten an answer yet as to what is going on. But I do want to say for anyone else who is going through <coughs> anything with their thyroid, you need, to, you need to be strong. <laughs> you need to be mentally and physically strong because... It, that's exactly what it takes away from you. It takes away 
any of your strength that you have, any of your confidence that you have in yourself. Um, I'm preaching to the choir here. I, I should be taking my own advice. It's not that easy when your moods are one way or the other. So, geez, the diaper is huge. Oh my goodness, chunky chunky cheeks. But, yeah, it's not easy. And it's, it's scary. It really is. He doesn't know if he wants to go down or up. There he goes. So try your hardest to feel good. Um, I've thought to myself, I'm actually going to go to the thrift store and buy some cheap, flowy kind of clothes until I feel more comfortable because I don't right now. Um, I think that'll help because it sucks when I get up and we have somewhere we want to go or we're going out with family or friends or we're going to their house and I go through every single drawer trying to put stuff on and I then I, you know, that crushes you, as a woman, crushes you. You, realize, you think to yourself, I, this is horrible, like maybe I should just go buy more clothes. I'm determined, absolutely determined, to figure this out, get it fixed, and I'm not buying new clothes. I will fit in my clothes. <laughs> I'm, I'm small, I'm a small person. I'm only five foot, so I shouldn't be over a certain weight. For me, I'm talking for me, personally, and I have a goal, and I this has become like a wall for all of that, and it's become an issue, and it's, it's no joke. It's really no joke. You really honestly don't understand what it does to you, unless you have to physically go through it yourself. There's times where I just all of a sudden, it's like a switch goes and your mood is completely different. Almost like you're not yourself. And it's weird and it's scary because it's almost like you you no longer have control. Somebody else is controlling what's going on. That's basically the only way that I can explain it. And it's ridiculous. And it's been rough. It's been really, really rough trying to deal with this. And if that's even it. I don't even know. I'm supposed to find out. Um, hopefully, this week, they want me to go back so they can tell me what's wrong instead of just telling me so I know what to do. Um, but it, it's no joke. It's no joke at all. I know that there are many, many people dealing with it. And I know that it's, it's serious. It's a serious thing, and I just don't understand why <laughs> why it's got to be such a teeny tiny thing that can do so much. It's, it's crazy how much it, it controls, really. But I just know from my personal experience, especially right now, because right now I would think would be the hard time of it. It is the hard time of it because I've been going for blood work, I've been going for testings, I don't have any answers yet. I'm feeling bigger and bigger, and I actually am after this going to weigh myself because I am curious as to how much I weigh right now. Minus like the two pounds for the shoots. Come on, give me that. But the whole like mental mind frame thing, it, it's absolutely insane what it does to you. It's very, very important to try your hardest to kind of step back from what you're doing or, or what's going on or what you're saying and think about it. Try to control whoever <laughs> is trying to control you and and take over because and that's basically what it feels like like I'm, I'm trying now to do a whole mental relax meditate type of control when I feel it happening I stop I breathe in deep through my nose out through my mouth I think of at least five things off the top of my head that are happy to me and then I try to you know what, what we put out we're going to get back and I don't want to put out any negative energy with this. And I don't want it to win. So I'm trying to fight it. And that's really the only thing I can say about it. I mean, I'll tune you guys in on more information when I find out what's going on. But when it comes to your thyroid or any issues that are going on with you, the most important thing is to try to stay strong mentally and physically. Because if you start to feel weak, if you start to cave and give in on those negative feelings, that's when it gets you. And I know that because I have that problem every day since this has been happening. So I know I have to take my own advice. 
it's not it's easier said than done of course but for anyone out there who's dealing with this it is no joke it is serious go to the doctor try to get information do your research even just diet and certain oils out there can actually help with certain things so if you're not into the whole giving medication there's plenty of other ways to do it but you have to do your research I'm actually gonna try next week a cleanse of it's not just a cleanse it's also um, certain juices and vegetables that are gonna be mixed together to help my uh, immune system my brain function I'm gonna do that off and on I'm gonna do one day with the juicing one day with regular food I don't really eat bad so that's not really a concern of mine but I think I should cut it out at least every other day to start out with I, I don't agree with the whole just straight seven day juicing you'll drop the weight if your body allows you to but you're gonna gain it right back so I want to do this the right way um, I'll let you know more about that as that goes that's gonna start I'm gonna go food shopping I have my grocery list for it this weekend and I'm gonna start it on Monday um, there he is again. On the bed! Buggy, buggy, buggy! Buggy, buggy! We call him bugs. Um, so, other than that, I'm gonna try that, see if that helps. Um, until then, and I hear from the doctor, just anyone who's going through this, please, please, please remember to get out of your head get out of your head. Your head is the most dangerous place to be in when it's not in the right place. And that's no joke. I know that myself. Um, this is not something that just I'm... Oh God, child. This is not something that just I'm dealing with. My children and my husband and my family are dealing with this as well because they have to deal with me. <laughs> so, try to stay strong. I'm going to try to take my own advice. And just do your research. Seriously, do your research. If, if you feel at all like there's something wrong, kid has no fear whatsoever. Just assume I'm going to catch him. Um, if you have any inkling at all that something's not right, figure it out. Get it checked out because I feel like I'm pretty far into this. And I probably should have gotten it checked sooner so I wouldn't be at this point. But I didn't. So just try to stay strong. Get out of your head, take a step back, look at everything. The whole breathing actually does help. Um, the main thing about the breathing though is thinking about things that make you happy. At least that's what I think. It helps me. Um, the first thing I think of is my family. I love my family. So when I think of them, a smile comes on my face and feels better. Now he's taking all my pants out of my drawer that I don't wear because they don't fit. <laughs> I will one day fit in them, but we'll see what happens. I'll keep you posted, and don't forget to do your research. Do your research. We have the opportunity to the World Wide Web at our fingertips. We should use it. Just don't go on WebMD because I noticed that, well, you can go on WebMD, and they're usually right with all of their statistics, but they go from the extreme like you look it up and it's like oh you have cancer oh you have a tumor like I just I just nobody wants to read that on the internet but do your research do your research please 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 and hopefully I'll have a better resolution to this hopefully by the end of next week the juicing will help I'm, I'm actually excited to do it I'm a little nervous because I can't drink I mean I can't eat anything the days that I do this and I love food. I love food in general. Not that I eat too much, but I do love to eat. I love food. Who does it? It makes us happy and it never disappoints us. So we should see how that goes. And I'll let you know how I feel. I have it all listed as to what certain juices do. And we'll see how that goes. And I'm going to change this little guy and we're going to go outside for a little bit. How about that? How about that? Freaking girl. All right. And remember, stay strong. Keep, keep yourself posted on what you should be doing. And stay happy. Tune in later. Bye.